Bitcoiners. I'm Drew, your host of Deciphered, a show from Blockstream that shares best practices in Bitcoin by exploring some of the cool features in our wallets, technologies, and products for all skill levels. Today, we're talking about the Blockstream Explorer, what it is, what it's not, learning some terminology around the tool, and to wrap it all up, we'll send a Bitcoin transaction to see what it looks like on the Explorer. So with that, let's get into it. Based on the free and open source eSplora backend, the Blockstream Explorer is a block explorer that aggregates and indexes public data from the Bitcoin and Liquid blockchains. It then displays the information in an easy to read format. With the proper information, the Blockstream Explorer can look up any transaction, block, hash, or address on either network since their first block. A block explorer is merely a tool to look at the details of a transaction available on the public ledger of a blockchain. There are no actions that can be taken to change any part of the transaction when using the tool. Think of the Blockstream Explorer as a search engine for Bitcoin and liquid transactions. Another way to explain what the Blockstream Explorer does is to explain what it doesn't do. The Blockstream Explorer cannot speed up the confirmation of your transaction. Each block on the Bitcoin blockchain takes roughly 10 minutes to be confirmed. If your transaction is included in a block, but the block is taking a long time to be confirmed, then you are simply out of luck and you have to wait for the network to confirm the block. If your transaction has not yet been confirmed on the blockchain, certain wallets allow you to increase the fee to the transaction, which in theory will get your transaction into a block faster. We will be doing a much deeper dive on this feature on the Blockstream Green Wallet in a later video. But for now, all you need to know is a block explorer is unable to do that. The Blockstream Explorer cannot assist if your account from another platform was hacked or involved in a scam. When a transaction is sent using the Bitcoin network, the transaction cannot be reversed by anyone, including Blockstream. This is why it is absolutely critical to get your funds off exchanges as fast as you can. Blockstream cannot reverse or refund transactions. As mentioned earlier, once a transaction is confirmed on either the Bitcoin or Liquid network, it is impossible to reverse the transaction. Funds shown on the Blockstream Explorer are not processed and or controlled by Blockstream. Blockstream Explorer is only collecting and displaying publicly available information about transactions broadcasted to the network. Blockstream is not processing the transactions you see on the site which also means that we cannot help speed up the confirmations of any transactions. Bitcoin shown on Blockstream Explorer are not inside a Blockstream wallet. Don't worry, your funds have not been sent to Blockstream if you see your transaction on the Blockstream Explorer. You can only see this on our website because all Bitcoin transactions are publicly broadcasted to the whole network. Blockstream Explorer simply displays the status and information about transactions so network participants can view them. To help us better understand how the Blockstream Explorer works, let's review the dashboard by looking up some old transactions and then sending a transaction ourselves. So with that, let's head to our desktop. Now that we are on the dashboard of the Blockstream Explorer, we can see it is divided up by two metrics, blocks and transactions. Clicking on either header is simply going to filter down to what you are looking for. Starting with blocks and reading from left to right, we first see height. Block height refers to how many blocks there are in the blockchain. Each block must precede the previous block to be considered to be a part of the blockchain. Think of it as a set of Legos. The only way to get a stack of Legos taller is to put another Lego block on top of the Lego stack. But with a blockchain, the longer the chain of blocks, the more energy it requires to break it apart meaning the longer the chain, the more secure it is. The block height number corresponds to how old the block is. The smaller the height number, the older the block is, and vice versa. Going to the right, we see timestamp. The timestamp refers to the exact time the block was mined and validated on the network. The mark distinguishes the block's hash and allows for manipulation to be avoided. So if you ever hear the term time chain, that person is referring to what differentiates one block from another, and that is the timestamp the block was hashed at. Going further to the right, we see transactions. This simply refers to the number of transactions that were in the block. There's really nothing too fancy about it. To the right of that is size kilobyte. 
This refers to the data size measured in kilobytes of all transactions within the block. The size of a block varies from one block to another, as there are different amounts of transactions and different types of transactions within it. Please note, though, that the bigger the size of the transaction, the more fees you will pay to send the transaction. The amount of Bitcoin sent in a transaction does not necessarily mean the fee is higher. It also depends on the type of transaction and how busy the network is too. Lastly, to the right of that, we see weight. This column is relatively new to Bitcoin and was added after the SegWit soft fork. SegWit allowed for new fields to be stored in a Bitcoin transaction. To properly distinguish between legacy transactions and new SegWit transaction, a new measurement type was put into place to show how much each transaction weighed. Legacy transactions tend to have more weight to them as they are carrying data that SegWit transactions do not. Now if we go over to transactions and we scroll down a little bit, we'll see transaction ID. A transaction ID simply is the identification number to a transaction. A transaction ID is 32 bytes or 64 characters long. A transaction needs to be confirmed on the blockchain to be aggregated here. Simply generating an address does not create a transaction ID. Next we see value. This is how much Bitcoin was transferred in the transaction. Next up is size. As mentioned earlier, size is how big the transaction is. Transaction size can be changed based on the type of transaction, for example, whether it is a single SIG or a multi-SIG wallet sending, how many UTXOs are involved, whether a legacy wallet is sending or receiving, how fast someone wants their transaction to be included into the blockchain, and how much Bitcoin is actually sent. Lastly, we see fee. This is the fee the sender is paying to get the Bitcoin transaction to be included in the blockchain. The bigger the weight of the transaction, the larger the fee. Now that we have gotten some definitions out of the way, let's take a peek at the search bar we have C at the top of the menu. Remember how I mentioned earlier that the Blockstream Explorer is more like a search engine than anything else? Well, this is exactly what I was talking about. This is a search bar that lets us look up any block, transaction, hash, or address that is in the Bitcoin or Liquid blockchains. For example, let's look up the first block or what we call Bitcoin's Genesis block together. If we type in zero and we press enter, we will see that the Genesis block loads up. If we scroll down a little bit, we will see the height of the block, the status of the block, and if we go to the right, we will see the amount of confirmations. This simply refers to the current block height minus the height the transaction was created. Under that, we will see the timestamp of when the block was mined, the size of the block, the virtual size, last but not least is the weight units of the block. If we scroll down just a little bit further, we will see the transactions that occurred within the block. But because this is the first block within the Bitcoin blockchain, there are no transactions. Rather, you just see the term Coinbase. Coinbase is in reference to how much the Bitcoin network pays the miners to mine blocks. You can go to any block within the Bitcoin blockchain and you will notice that there is a Coinbase fee. This is simply the network paying the miners to mine blocks. Now let's look up a more recent block within the Bitcoin blockchain. So let's go back to the top and let's type in 654321, press enter, you got liftoff. If we scroll down, we're going to see a absolutely ton of transactions within this block. Now I'm just going to grab a random transaction. I don't know who this is or what this is. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go to the top. I copied it. And then I'm going to go to the search bar and I'm going to paste it in. Once I paste it in, you look here at block height, you will see the block height of 654321. Now if we take the hash of it and copy this and go back to that search bar and we paste in the hash, we then will see the block height of 654321. And if we wanted to go and find that transaction again, that transaction would be within here. Next, let's do a quick dive into how to read transactions on the Blockstream Explorer. We're going to first pull up our Blockstream Green Wallet, and from there, send a transaction to see what it looks like on the Explorer. Now that I'm in my Blockstream Green Wallet, I'm going to pull up a transaction that I did in the past. All I'm going to do is click on a transaction, and then press View and Explore. Once it loads, we're going to see the amount of confirmations that this transaction has received. If you just sent a transaction, the count of confirmations you're going to see will be far less than what we see on the screen right here. If we scroll down a little bit, we're going to see size. This refers to the footprint of the data. Think about how much bandwidth the transaction uses to get into the block. That is size. 
Next, we're going to see virtual size. A unit of V size is equal to four weight units. Some people call a unit of V size by the name of V byte. The number of bytes and V bytes in a transaction are identical for transactions done before SegWit. Virtual size was introduced in the software to allow for backwards compatibility with legacy transactions. Virtual size helps determine how much the fee will cost to transact. Next, we're going to go down and see version. This refers to wallets creating transactions, with newer consensus rules can use higher version numbers. Next, we're going to see lock time. This refers to transactions that have a time lock on them. Some wallets allow for transactions to be locked up for X amount of time or until X block is struck. Only then can the transaction be sent through the blockchain. This is not something to really worry about. The default for almost all wallets is to get your transaction into the next block. If we scroll down a little bit further, we see SegWit fee savings. This shows how much fees you saved or burned using SegWit. It will also show you the fees saved if you use SegWit BAC32 addresses too. SegWit BAC32 is a type of Bitcoin address, which was a part of a Bitcoin improvement proposal, otherwise known as a BIP, and this BIP was 0173. Next, we see privacy analysis. Many people think Bitcoin is more private than it actually is. Without taking the proper precautions, your transactions can be easily tied back to your identity. Now let's go to the liquid side of things. In order to do that, all I need to do is go to the upper right hand corner and click liquid. Once you do that, you're brought to the liquid side of the Blockstream Explorer. As you can see, it looks pretty similar to the Bitcoin side. Really, the only big difference is if you go to a transaction, you're going to notice, you scroll down a little bit, you're going to notice that the only thing you see is the transaction fee that was paid. This is because Liquid has confidential transactions, which means the asset and the amount of the asset are not shared publicly. In addition to confidential transactions, which preserve financial privacy and create a more discrete point of sale, traders may prefer to transact on Liquid also for cheaper fees and faster transaction times. Final settlement on Liquid is only two minutes. Before we close out for today, let's review what features we learned about the Blockstream Explorer. We first discussed the Blockstream Explorer as a block explorer based on the free and open source eSplorer backend. This aggregates and indexes public data from the Bitcoin and Liquid blockchains and then displays the information in an easy to read format. We then talked about what the Blockstream Explorer is not capable of to help us learn what it is capable of. For example, the Blockstream Explorer cannot change any data, transactions, code, really anything you can think about, this tool cannot change. The Blockstream Explorer simply looks up information on the Bitcoin and Liquid blockchains and presents it in an easily readable format. Next, we look through the Blockstream Explorer dashboard and learned about the blocks and transactions categories. We also learned about some of the metrics available to review, such as height, timestamp, transactions, size and weight, and more. We then interacted with the search function and filtered by block and transaction, going more deeply into each and learning about what information is available and how to read that information, which then led us to review the different address types and how they came to fruition through Bitcoin improvement proposals, otherwise known as BIPs. And then we showcased what a transaction looks like on the Blockstream Explorer after sending a transaction. And then we wrapped it up by talking about the Liquid side of the Blockstream Explorer. For the most part, the Liquid and Bitcoin sides of the Explorer look very similar. The big difference for Liquid is the protocol uses confidential transactions. This obfuscates how much and what type of asset was sent for a greater degree of privacy. If you have other questions related to the Blockstream Explorer or Blockstream Green, feel free to reach out to us in the comments section down below or join the Green Community Telegram. We're always looking for new topics to cover. And as always, thank you for watching. Until next time, continue stacking those sats, and always remember, don't trust, verify.